Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is leading worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you have chosen to spend this time with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in worship on this beautiful day that God has given us. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for worship for the very first time. We're so glad that you are here. I want to encourage you and everyone to use the contact form. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and there's a QR code for it too on your screen. Please go ahead and, and get into that contact form. Let us know that you're here. Um, share your email address with us. We'd love that so that we can connect with you. We can uh, get our e-newsletter to you that has all all of the ways that we can connect and support you in ministry and in faith and in growth and in love. So please use that. There's also a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please do use that contact form today. When we do gather for online, online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. This means that we are going to participate. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to really focus in and then do what we're doing together today in worship. Pray when it's time to pray. Stand up and sing when it's time to stand up and sing. Remember, this isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is worship with one another and worship of our God. So we fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. So the way that we're in the comment section today, the way we may be gathered with other people wherever we are, all this worship that we're sending out into the world, we want it all to be a blessing to everyone that is involved. Again, we are so glad that you are here for Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Welcome. Please join us in singing, We Thy People Praise Thee. before you this day. Strengthen us in our innermost being and dwell in our hearts through faith. Help us to be rooted and grounded in Christ, whose love is beyond all knowledge. Help us comprehend even the smallest part of the beautiful mystery of your grace. Grant that we may experience the fullness of your presence with us in all times and in all places. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond and also with you share that in the comments with one another with me and with these folks in our church community peace be with you good morning church peace be with you from lauren mcpherson and marigold good morning i'm brooke spangler and this is caspian Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Wayne Sawyer. Peace be with you. 
Oh yes, indeedy, it is time for Small Talk. I want to encourage all the children who are joined with us in online worship to get in really close to your screen, to your device, so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with Small Talk. This special time is led by Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her very wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's come in close right now for Small Talk. Good morning, everyone. Hi. I am Miss Lori, and this is Laud the Lamb. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about roots. Now, a lot of times when we think about roots, we think about plants, right? A whole bunch of plants behind me. And I happen to have one that's just ready for today. So hold on one second. Here he is. And you can see his roots in there, right? He came off of a bigger plant at someone else's house and I liked the plant. So they cut off a piece of it and said, if I just put it in water, it would grow these roots and then I could pot it myself. Mm -hmm. So I've let it grow and grow these roots so that it has a, what we call a strong foundation. Your home has a strong foundation so it doesn't fall in the ground, yeah? But these roots go in the ground or go in soil, right? All of the trees that you see outside, they have really strong roots. What does this have to do with Jesus and God, you might say? I get it. If we plant our roots in God and our faith in God, we have a really strong foundation. So what we're going to do here today, and Laud, I'm going to do the, the digging because you, you know, you're kind of got white paws and things. We have a, plant, a planter here with some dirt in it. Ouch. No, 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 no. Okay. With some dirt. And we're going to dig a hole in this dirt. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm digging a hole in here. And then we're gonna take this guy. Oh, look at him, he is so ready. This guy, I'll be honest, I don't even know exactly what kind of plant this is, but I liked it. And we're gonna plant his roots in here. Right, we'll plant his roots. Uh-oh. Okay, well, we'll go with this guy. Hmm. And then we're going to water him. Hold on to the plant. I'm going to water him or her. I guess I don't really know. And now I have a new plant that's rooted in soil. But we need to root with the Lord. Have a great day, everybody. Love you. Bye. Join me in singing Spirit of the Living God.
My name is Gene Brim, a longtime member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today's reading from the Bible is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. The Apostle Paul writes this prayer to the church at Ephesus. <clears throat> For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the richness of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height that you will know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all his fullness of God. Now to him whom by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. On this holiday weekend in October, at least here in North America, people's hearts and thoughts are turning to fall. The last couple of weeks here in Springfield, Illinois, we've seen fall-like weather pop up for a couple of days and then only to be chased away by the stubborn summer humidity and heat. But we all know that October means fall. We see fall festivals popping up everywhere, particularly in our agricultural central Illinois with corn and soybean harvests, pumpkin harvests, all of those things. The inevitable signs of fall are everywhere around here. We've got pumpkin festivals and corn mazes and village fairs and, of course, homecoming dances and football games. For my husband, Curtis, this longing for fall looks like eyeing the possibility of roasted turkey. He loves roasted turkey and he checks the prices at the grocery store each and every week uh, looking for that pre-Thanksgiving loss leader to uh, show up at the grocery store. Uh, he likes to roast as many turkeys as he possibly can talk us into through October and November, which culminates of course in a Thanksgiving turkey. But you know, lots of us have uh, all kinds of hopes and expectations for fall. For some, it's the craving of pumpkin spice everything and cozy sweaters to wear. For others, it's an acknowledgement of the changing of seasons, the change in weather, the shift from the exuberance of summer to the deepening cool with its acknowledgement of change and transition and loss of one season to another. Some people are looking for a change in their life with the change of seasons particularly as we continue to live through COVID-19 pandemic with its ups and downs, good news and bad, continued deaths and continued hopefulness for people to be immunized. There is a deep longing for connection through all of this, for thankfulness, to see something good in each other and our world. These fall longings rest in a deep-rooted care for one another even when forces and powers may be screaming loudly against that, wanting people to embrace an individualism that is antithetical to how we have been created by God to share and care for community. I believe that this longing is rooted in our inherent need to give thanks, to share with loved ones, new friends, people we do not know, and in our communities, and to connect with the divine spirit of God that pulses through our lives. For at the heart of this longing is a truth about who God is. Our God is a God of abundance. We see the testimony to God's abundant love and grace throughout the entirety of our Bibles. There are so many stories from Scripture, but I'm going to highlight just a few of my favorites. In the book of Joel, in chapter 2, verses 18 through 30, 
The prophet Joel tells us how he has received the word from God that after a long season of drought and swarms of locusts, that the God of abundance will continue to bring all of creation blessing. Listen to this beautiful poetry in chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. There's a the, uh, the dirt gets a shout out. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. We get a shout out for the animals and all growing things. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. There's a shout out to the people with an abundant overflowing of what they need. The end of this passage from Joel is one that may be familiar to you. Every year in our church, we read this in connection with our Pentecost celebrations and the birthday of the Christian church, with the overwhelming gift of God's Spirit found in the book of Acts, which quotes this from the prophet Joel in chapter 2, verses 28 through 29. I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will have dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will give even my spirit to my servants, both men and women. Not only will rain, prolific growth, and healing pour down upon the earth and all of creation and all people, but God will also pour down God's Spirit on everyone. Not in carefully measured quantities, not with distinctions like you get a lot, you get a dribble, a droplet here, and a little cup full there. Rather, God's Spirit is poured out abundantly like a great waterfall. God's Spirit is poured out extravagantly on all people so that we will all know the lavish love of God that is given to us. Let's move to another piece of scripture. How about the Gospel of John in chapter 10, verses 1 through 10? In these verses, Jesus tells us why it is he has come using the beautiful and enduring image of being the Good Shepherd, the one who calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, as he says in verse 3. Jesus came to bring life, to bring the reality that we do not have to be destroyed by sin and death. Jesus tells us in verse 10 that he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Again, not measured quantities of new life, but abundant life. Not just another obligation to meet, eked out between other obligations in our lives. No, abundant eternal life with Jesus Christ and in community with one another. Sheep of the Good Shepherd following in Him in this life and into eternal life. Abundant life now and abundant life into eternity that only Jesus can give and gives beyond all measure. Both of these passages from Joel and John describe God's abundance as extravagant gifts of spirit, of discipleship, of life, and eternal life. And then in the passage from the Bible that Jean shared with us today, we hear the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, a beautiful serenade and prayer about God's abundant love through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I think it bears repeating, so let's, let's hear it again. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God.
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen indeed. God gives powerful strength with the Spirit. God totally fills us with Christ through faith. Through his love, we are filled with the power of wisdom and understanding of the incredible reach of God's strength, power, and love. And then there's that concluding line that Paul writes. Now to him who by the power at work with us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. This is an amazing truth about the way God works in our lives. God is able to accomplish more through us than we can ever think to ask, more than we could ever dream up, in more ways than we could ever imagine. God blesses us in ways that we might never think of ourselves. And God asks us to respond in ways that we might never consider on our own, in ways that lead us out of our comfort zone, in ways that we might never dare, in ways that echo God's extravagant, abundant love for us. The scripture testimony is clear. Of course, God wants to bless us abundantly. But we know from Ephesians and our own experience that God's idea of abundant blessings might be different from our own, such as blessing us with abundant spirit, abundant eternal life, abundant challenges or an extravagant turn in our understanding and relationship with God, Jesus, and Spirit. God is not like a vending machine where we punch in our request and God delivers it into our hands. God's abundance is a relationship, like that of a best friend or a loving spouse who hears our wants and needs and offers what could be best for us, even if it's not always what we desired. So, how are you experiencing God's abundant blessings? Sometimes it's hard to recognize and recall those blessings unless we take the time to notice them. How are you noting God's abundant blessings? Sometimes it's hard to see blessings because our worries and stresses and troubles are so urgent that they block everything else out of our sight. How are you releasing your cares to God so that you can see God's abundant blessings? This fall, I invite you to extend your thanksgiving for God's abundant blessings from just the last Thursday in November to this entire season. Let this fall be an entire season of giving thanks, and not just on one day. God's abundant blessings for us are greater than just one day can hold. So let us give thanks every day in prayer and worship and service and sharing and work and love. Amen. Please join us in singing Enough.
I'm Ellen Dixon, and I am part of the Zephyr class and the choir here at Douglas Avenue Church. Let's pray together. Dear God, Almighty Creator, I often think of a lady I met who had a situation that she saw absolutely no possible way of solving it. You told her I have a thousand ways to work this problem out. The problem did get resolved, and when the lady was thanking you, you said, I still have 999 ways left. You are a limitless God, with obviously a great sense of humor. Thank you for being a gigantic, loving God that created laughter, joy, and also gave us the great capacity to care. You were moved with compassion for our needs, and so we sit here at your table now just as we did last Sunday for World Communion Sunday. We laid out on your table all the concerns we share with you. Thank you for sitting here with us today. We need to see that you hurt with us as well as rejoice with us and laugh with us. It hurts when relationships get complicated and there are so many decisions to make. Guide our choices, please. Help us to not hurry into choices before we consult you. Help us to trust your guidance and slow us down to listen, to listen for clarity. Also slow us down to praise you for all the things that are going well, to find the golden moments that are given by you each day. May we see how you are preparing the way before each of us. I am the way, the truth, and the life, you have said, and we believe you. Bless the children that came into this world this week. Bless those who are caring for them. Those caregivers might well be pretty tired. Please encourage them and give them hope and courage. Hold those who have lost a family member this week. I know you grieve with them. These, dear people, are probably tired also. Please hold their hearts and give them hope and courage. We ask all these things because you want to hear from us. You want to give us from your rich abundance. You look for ways to provide for us. Lord, may we empty our hands of the things we hold on to so we can be fully open-handed to receive all that you have for us. May we let loose of hurts fears, regrets, and unfairness or injustice either done to us or by us. Allow us to receive forgiveness and walk by your side in great relief. 
thank you that can be our reality. Our reality that you are a gracious, forgiving, open-handed God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for all of the ways you abundantly give into the life-giving ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your gifts of time and talent and of financial gifts make a huge difference, and they're needed to keep our ministries going, healthy, alive, and growing so that we can serve our community with God's abundant love. I encourage you to continue to give into these ministries. You can give your financial gifts in so many different ways. Online, using our online giving portal, the link to that is right in the comment section and on the QR code. You can give by sending in your donations to our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office you can give automatically using your financial institution or ours. If you need assistance with that, just let us know in the church office. But thank you for all the ways that you are giving. I want to lift up just a, spe a few special opportunities for ministry and service that are coming up in the life of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and just remind you to use your contact form uh, to put your email address there because then you can get all of the information on these ways to connect and to grow in faith and to love and serve. Douglas Avenue is very excited to hold another COVID-19 vaccination clinic upcoming on Saturday, October 23rd from 1 to 5 p.m. We are joining with some wonderful community partners, including Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Alder Woman Erin Conley, and Fifth Street Renaissance. And we need everyone's help to make this vaccination clinic a success. First off, we need you to help recruit people to be vaccinated, yourself maybe, folks in your family, friends and neighbors. And we need help spreading the word around our DAUMC neighborhood and registering people. We will need help with setup the week of the clinic and of course help on the day of the clinic with hospitality and support. We need your donations to help underwrite the hospitality and incentives that we are offering to people to be vaccinated. And we need you to pray for this effort and for the safety and health of our community in combating COVID-19. So you can give to financially support this through our online giving portal. Just choose vaccination clinic in the drop down menu. And please let us know how you would like to help with this effort using the link in the comment section or the one that is in the e-newsletter. It's also time for our annual trunk or treat celebration. It's set for Sunday, October 31st from 2 to 4 p.m. in the back parking lot of DAUMC. This is a safe, uh, fun neighborhood celebration. It's held outside. There are lots of ways that you can be a part. You can bring your car, truck, or van or other vehicle to decorate and to hand out candy. Uh, you can donate candy. You can help with hospitality, with setup, cleanup, and more. So please see the e-newsletter for all of that information or check out the link that's provided uh, to access the sign up. And finally today, we are honored to have a special word from Faith Coalition for the Common Good here in Springfield, Illinois. Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is proud to be a member organization as a part of our commitment to be about transforming our community for peace, justice, and equity. Let's give our attention now to this video presented by Jeffrey Diver, a community organizer with FCCG. Hi there, my name is Jeffrey Diver. I am a community organizer with Faith Coalition for the Common Good. And I just wanna take a moment to thank Douglas Avenue United Methodist for allowing me to speak to you all today. So you might be asking yourself, what is Faith Coalition for the Common Good? Well, our vision is racial and economic equity. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization made up of uh, 35 member institutions, which consist of faith-based um, communities as well as nonprofit organizations uh, who work collaboratively towards racial equity, a fair economy, and a participatory decision-making process. Because at Faith Coalition, we believe those most impacted by injustices must be at the center of the decision-making process. 
We are also a part of the Gamaliel of Illinois and Iowa Network, as well as the National Gamaliel Network. And through community organizing and leadership training, we hope that our members are able to address uh, injustices in their communities, as well as enact uh, positive systemic change. We do host several events throughout the year, and we would love for you to participate in those. You can get a hold of us by going to our website, uh, faithcoalition-il.org. You could also give us a call at 217-544-2297. And if you're feeling like it, shoot us an email. Uh, you can reach us at fccg2208 at gmail.com. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us for volunteer opportunities or leadership opportunities. And be sure to like us on Facebook and check us out on Twitter and Instagram as well. While you're observing our social medias, don't be afraid to check out our upcoming events, such as our uh, annual fall banquet, which will be held virtually this year on Zoom, November 6th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you all and have a great rest of your Sunday. Please join us in singing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Thank you for joining in online worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been an honor to share this time with you, and I pray that all of it uh, has been a wonderful experience for you, that you're uplifted, that you found meaning, that you will connect with us again in online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. We love you. We want to connect with you and be a part of your life of faith to grow with you in love and in service. Uh, please do use that contact form today. Remember that there is a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to be able to pray with you as well, so please use that contact form. And as you go into your day, go knowing that the God of abundant grace and love loves you entirely, that Jesus Christ goes with you every day, and that the Holy Spirit empowers you to share abundantly in your own life every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.